In today's video, we're gonna talk about the Toronto condo buildings with the most Airbnbs, the most short-term rentals. That's right, we're gonna break down a list of condos that have the most registered short-term rental units and break down the buildings and give you all the facts and context you need to know. And today's video can either be really, really good news for you if you are a Toronto condo investor who purchases units and Airbnbs them out or you know has them on market for short-term rentals, or if you are a typical end user User, a home buyer or a owner in one of these buildings this video can either be a cautionary list of Toronto condos to potentially avoid or it could be really bad news if you already live in these buildings nonetheless we're gonna break down the Toronto condo buildings that allow Airbnbs and have the most Airbnbs however before we get into that hello everyone this is Sam from Siberia Six Real Estate if you're new to the channel on this channel we like to discuss everything having to do with the Toronto and GTA real estate market so subscribe for more and and it is now easier than ever to get in touch with me my contact information is in the description box and there's also a link in there where you can book a chat for any buying or selling inquiries so believe it or not ever since the Airbnb regulations the short-term rental regulations came into effect a couple of years ago now short-term rental units have to be registered and of course you can go on the city of Toronto website to see by address which units are registered as short-term rentals you can simply download the Excel file or convert it to sheets and go through all the buildings and all the units that are actual short-term rentals. So using that as a resource, along with Graham Rowland's wonderful article on this very topic, and he actually went through it more thoroughly and broke down everything, and the link of that is in the description, by the way. Nonetheless, using both of those resources, I compiled a list of the Toronto condo buildings with the most short-term rental registered units or Airbnbs for lack of a better word. So let's start. First off, Parade 1, 10 Capital Court. This building has 25 units registered, 25 short-term rental units that are registered. And keep in mind, by the way, as we go through uh, this list, these are what's actually registered. These are the people who are going about it the proper way. There are, are probably tons more in these buildings that are operating kind of under the table. But 10 Capital Court in City Place has 25 units registered. Now, the interesting thing is, Although a 10 Capital Court is a different municipal address, it is legally the same condominium building as 15 Ice Boat Terrace. The same thing applies to 151 Dan Leckie Way and 21 Ice Boat Terrace. Two different municipal addresses, but legally speaking, in terms of the condominium corporation, uh, they are legally the same building. And if you wanna know a little bit more about these buildings, obviously, I don't know how to put it lightly, but I did include them in a video I made uh, not too far back of, in my professional opinion, of downtown Toronto condo buildings to avoid or ones that I typically tell my buyer clients to avoid if possible. So you can check out more of my thoughts on these buildings I just listed in that video. So nonetheless, since 10 Capital Court has 25 registered units and then 15 ISPO Terrace, 27 registered units, essentially we do the math 25 plus 27 we come to 53 registered units and in between these two buildings there is a total of 830 or so units that essentially means if my math is correct around six to seven percent of the total amount of units are registered short-term rentals now once again that's the people who are going about it the proper way and just to give you an abbreviated version of what I think about these two buildings in particular and we'll touch on them even more I'm not a fan I generally think once again it's only good for rental purposes if you are a home buyer, you're better off looking at elsewhere, even if you're an investor, not even an end user. Investors and end users both, I generally recommend my Toronto home buyers to stay away from this building. It has tons of problems. Next up, another building, 87 Peter. This building, once again, has 25 registered short-term rental units. Around 49 stories, 630 units. Once again, 25 out of the 630 units are sh registered short-term rentals. Built by Menkes. Menkes does really good work, right? I am a fan of Menkes. I am a fan of, uh, along with Menkes, obviously, Minto, Tridel, and all the other ones. And we'll touch on Tridel a bit more, actually, later in the video. So it's built by a reputable and good builder, a builder that I'm typically a big fan of their work. Condominiums usually go wrong at two different stages. Either they're built poorly, or not even built poorly, but they're built by a builder that didn't really think the project through. They're not conceived well. So that's where they can go wrong if it's in the wrong hands or it can go wrong at the management phase. So you can have a really good builder that builds a really good building 
with really good floor plans. Uh, it's conceived of well, the building flows together, everything is state of the art, but it's not managed properly, right? Because once the builder delivers it to the management, right, and the condo board, it's kind of out of the builder's hands, right? In this case, in Menke's building, it's not the best building by any means, but it's a pretty decent building. But unfortunately, due to poor management or in the event of, if you're an Airbnb investor, short-term rental investor, great management for you, uh, it has kind of gone awry a bit. Next up, 231 Fort York, Atlantis at Water Park. This building has 26 registered short-term rental units. And this building, along with the other Fort York buildings, I will name on this list. Um, generally, my opinion on all of them are about the same. There are actual decent options in terms of one plus ones to two bedrooms and more affordable price ranges in these Fort York buildings. And all in all, I would say these buildings out of all the ones that I'm gonna list in today's video, maybe there's an exception here and there that we'll touch on, but these Fort York buildings, 231 included, are one of those where the abundance of uh, short-term rentals in these buildings shouldn't necessarily be a deal breaker, it should just be a serious consideration because these buildings do have enough redeeming qualities despite the uh, prevalence of the Airbnbs in them that could be worthwhile for a lot of buyers. In fact, just a couple of uh, downtown Toronto condo buyers I just worked with this last month, we considered some Fort York options. Uh, I brought up the fact that these Fort York options could have the risk of being uh, next to an Airbnb unit. That, and for other reasons, we went to different directions. Nonetheless though, these Fort York buildings, 231, one of them, do have Airbnbs, in this case, 26 registered units, but they also do have the redeeming qualities. As buildings, they range around six and a half to seven and a half in my professional opinion. Moving on to 210 Victoria Street, Pantages Tower. This building has about 37 units registered as short-term rentals. That's right, 37 Airbnb units in this building, Pantages Tower. Now the thing about this building is it uh, appears to be older than it actually is. It's only 19 years old, but it has depreciated throughout the years. Maintenance is on the higher side, but you know, you have some 34 year old buildings that have actually uh, been able to maintain value and keep maintenance down uh, better than this building. Not to say it's a bad building, location is absolutely fantastic. It's literally a minute away, not even a minute, maybe 45 seconds walking from Eden Center. Nonetheless, it has a very hotel feeling to it. Even the concierge, when you walk in, it's as if you're walking into a hotel. And the units don't have balconies, right? That's one of the first things I noticed, but they have really good floor to ceiling windows. And clearly in this case, whether it's written on paper or it's not, the management does turn a blind eye to short-term rentals, as is evidenced by 37 registered units. Next up, another building with tons of Airbnbs and one that is probably a bit relaxed towards Airbnbs and short-term rentals is 55 Bremner. 55 Bremner Maple Leaf Square, I believe, or Maple Leaf uh, Residences, has a total of 41 registered units. Now, much like the 15 Ice Boat Terrace and 10 Capital we discussed, 55 Bremner and 65 Bremner are municipal address wise, two different buildings. But legally, in terms of the condominium corporation, in, co in terms of the condominium plan number, they're one legal entity. They are one legal condominium corporation. So 65 Bremner has 49 registered units. In total, that brings our total to 90 registered short-term rental units. 90 out of 872 total units. So in a roundabout way, about 10% of the total units in this building are short-term rentals and Airbnbs. Now, in terms of building quality, I haven't had many experiences with it. In terms of buying or selling, I have showed it a couple of times. From what I understand, it's not too bad, actually. Um, and I would, once again, probably shy away from recommending it for a lot of people, but it's definitely not the worst building on this list. Its location is great. Uh, just the amount of Airbnbs off the bat would scare me away or give me pause to ever recommend a unit in this building to my buyers. And I know they had some flooding issues uh, in the last eight months. Uh, I think the 45th floor or something like that, the 40 plus floors, there were some flooding problems. Nonetheless though, 55 and 65 Bremner 
are yet another building or buildings that make up this list of Toronto condos with the most short-term rentals. Next up, we get into 209 Fort York. As I said earlier, remember the term Fort York or the name Fort York, because we're gonna get back to that. And 215 Fort York. 215 is Neptune, 209 is Neptune 2. And much like 231 Fort York, as I said, much of the same applies here, but let me break down the numbers here a little bit more concretely. 209 Fort York, Neptune 2 also has about 49 registered Airbnb units, whereas 215 Fort York has around 52 registered short-term rental units. And once again, these buildings, much like the ones I just previously listed, are legally one condominium corporation. They actually even share the same uh, amenities. If you ever walk by these buildings, you're going to the lobby, you'll see a little bridge on top. Actually, much like the Icebo Terrace buildings, right? They do have that huge, massive bridge. In the case of the Neptune buildings, the Fort York ones, it's actually much smaller scale and lower to the ground. But nonetheless, that is the shared amenities between the two physical structures, which legally are one condominium corporation. Nonetheless, a total of 861 units. When you combine the registered short-term rentals of each uh, municipal building, you come to around 101 short-term rentals, if my math is correct, which out of 860 units is around 12%. Now, once again, I'll say this. I think these buildings, the Fort York ones, as long as they don't have Kitech plumbing because these Fort York ones did have issues with Kitech plumbing, which is another a huge factor into buying Toronto condos in downtown North York, Midtown, anywhere really, uh, west side, east side, is you have to check the Kitech plumbing situation. Nonetheless, um, as long as they don't have Kitech plumbing, these buildings are uh, sufficient, in my opinion, for a buyer who's a little bit more relaxed in terms of noise, who's a little bit more relaxed in terms of people coming and going, right? If you're just more uh, keen on the unit layout, the exposure, the location, and not so sensitive on you know how, how much noise there is, not so sensitive in, in terms of how quiet the building is, then these could be sufficient options, all these Fort York ones, for people who are looking to hold on to something for a year to three years. But you know, at that point, my guidance to my buyers really comes down to their particular sensibilities and their criteria. Now we come to 251 Jarvis Street. Now, if you're a long time viewer of this channel, if you've seen my videos on other social media platforms, you know that I am not the biggest fan of these buildings and that's putting it very mildly. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story. I once talked about the builder of these buildings. I got a very threatening letter saying, please stop talking about us. So uh, the way I would put it is, you know how I have the condo that shall not be named. In this case, I will talk about this building 251 Jarvis and I will say it's by the builder that shall not be named. So we're adding more to the category of things I can't name apparently. Nonetheless, this building does have a lot of registered Airbnb units or short-term rental units to the tune of 50. Now, as a matter of percentage, it's not actually that many, right? There's like a thousand and twelve units in 251 Jarvis and then 210 Jarvis. Those are two buildings. Once again, same condominium corporation. But I would say Airbnbs are the least of the issues with these buildings, hypothetically, of course. Next up, a surprising entry on this list that is probably the exception, which is 155 Yorkville Avenue, a highly sought after building, expensive building, been selling around like $1,300 almost per square foot in the last year in the down market. Units upwards of 4,000 square feet in this building, a highly uh, prestigious and dignified building in a highly prestigious and dignified location. So why is it on this list? Because according to the Toronto website's resource and the other source I'm using by Graham Rowland, it has about 97 registered Airbnb units in this building. Now, this is probably the exception. And what do I mean by that? Well, all the other buildings we've listed and we're gonna list right now border on, you know, being affordable uh, buildings to cheap buildings for good reasons. The reason this building has a lot of Airbnbs is because probably investors have cornered the market on luxury Airbnb rental units, right? So if you're going on Airbnb or any other short-term rental website and looking to book something for your vacation, there are the affordable options, there are the expensive options, then there's the luxury options. This building most likely is the only building or one of the only buildings that does allow Airbnb or if they don't allow it on paper, they turn a blind eye to it. As a result, they have kind of cornered the market, the luxury short-term rental sector, for lack of a better term, I guess, within the Toronto condo market and really the downtown Toronto core. Next up, you have the ICE condos, 12 York and 14 York. Now, how much more can I talk about these buildings? I've actually taken it quite easy on these buildings, uh, but 
there's not much more I really can add other than to tell you the amount of short-term rentals registered in these buildings. 12 York has 106 short-term rentals registered with the city of Toronto and 14 York has 136 short-term rentals registered. Once again, 12 and 14 York are two different physical structures, two different buildings, but the same condominium corporation, legally speaking. So they have around 1,300 units in between them. To be exact, I think 1,340 or so. And when you add up the totals, of registered units in both buildings, you come to around 242. So there's a total of 242 short-term rentals registered between 12 and 14 York. And when you just simply divide that by the total amount of units, 1,340, you come to 18%, 18% nearly, and there's no exaggeration, nearly a quarter of the entire building are Airbnbs. And once again, that's the people just going about the proper way. Who knows how many under the table situations there are. And by the way, if you haven't noticed a common trend so far, about like five to six of these buildings I've listed so far have been built by the same builder. I'll let you connect the dots as to who that builder is. But it seems this builder has a knack for building things that are really short-term rental friendly, which once again, if you're an Airbnb investor is a fantastic news for you. If you're an end user, not so much. We're almost on the list, but before we get to the Toronto condo with the most Airbnbs or registered short-term rental units, as per the city of Toronto, let's revert back to the I spoke Terrace buildings, namely now now Parade 1, Parade 2, 151 Dan Leckie Way and 21 Iceboat Terrace, once again, legally one condominium corporation. How many times can I say that in this video? Apparently a lot. 151 Dan Leckie Way has 91 registered uh, short-term rental units, whereas Parade 2 has 151 registered short-term rental units. Now, that by itself is a lot. And if we add up the total amount of Airbnbs or registered short-term rental units in both buildings, 151 and now 21 Ice Boat Terrace, we come to around 242 registered short-term rentals. And the total amount of units is 920 total units. So doing quick math, once again that comes to 26 percent now we have actually exceeded the quarter mark a quarter plus of all these units in this building are airbnbs or short-term rentals now you may ask well why is this an issue maybe i haven't explained that thoroughly yet in this video maybe i'm assuming you know a lot about my opinions and my previous content but the reason that's an issue is because you're essentially living in a hotel building where your neighbors are changing every other weekend who knows there are a lot of parties happening a lot of people coming and going and naturally people take less care of the building and they're more likely to not abide by the rules and regulations of the building as well so this can cause uh you know garbage piling up in the chute uh you know partying at late hours people even in some cases smoking in the stairwell and if you want to live in a home if you want Want to have quiet ease and peace or let's say that's not even important for you but if you want to buy something and sell it down the line for higher than what you bought it for these buildings with a lot of airbnbs in this case 26 percent will definitely have a huge impact of your quality of life if you're sensitive to these things and definitely an impact on resale value it's just a lot of headache when there's so many registered short-term rentals in one building but let's get to the building the toronto condo building with the most airbnbs with the most short-term rental units this is the building that is your dream if you are a investor who purchases units and rents them on short-term basis and this is a building that could be your worst nightmare if you are a person that is looking to buy into a building to call your home and this might be surprising 300 front street by tridell you know on this channel how big a fan of Tridel I am. Some of the best Toronto condo buildings, which I listed in this video, you can check it out, are Tridel buildings. They're fantastic, quiet, and user-friendly buildings all the way from West Toronto to East Toronto to North York to downtown. Some of the best buildings are Tridel buildings. But in this case, I previously mentioned buildings go wrong in two stages, sometimes the development phase, sometimes the management phase, and this is the case with this building. 300 front street in downtown has a total of 683 units. How many short-term rentals are registered with the city with just with the city by the way just with the city a total of 209 short-term rentals are registered with the city 
When you do the math, that's more than a quarter. That is almost a third, a third of every single unit in this building are short-term rentals. If you're buying this building, chances are, 30% chances are that you're gonna be next to a Airbnb or a short-term rental. Well, that's it for today's video. The Toronto condo buildings with the most Airbnbs, the Toronto condo buildings that allow Airbnbs and short-term rentals. Hopefully this was informative. As always, for any further inquiries, feel free to find my contact information in the description box. There's a link you can easily book an appointment with me to chat with regards to any buying or selling inquiries. Lastly, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. There's a lot more interesting and informative content coming out. Thank you very much sir, for watching. Stay safe and stay tuned. Thank you.